Well, that funeral got me thinking, sir. I was fond of Mike. He was dumb, but there wasn't much harm in him. They say the bullet got his one good eye. He was staggering around the streets. Just a blind gunman. And they plugged him full of holes. Don't do much good to think about it. Sure it does. Shows you what kind of a world this is. He had gold cupids on his coffin. Ten grand it cost. That's what Mike got. But I'm going to get something different. I'm going to get what Mike was after, only I'm going to get mine respectable. The gold and silver I'm after ain't going to be on my coffin. You've got to be patient. You've got to wait. It's a cinch for you to talk. You're sitting pretty. You swell secretary getting thirty-two fifty a week. You're sitting on top of the world. That's not on top of the world. It is from where I'm looking. You mustn't be jealous about my making money. I feel that it's for us, for our future. We dream a lot about the future, but it don't get us no nearer. But you want it to, don't you, Joe? We've said it enough times. Do you know what you're going to do tomorrow? You tell me. Jump in the river? No. You're coming down to the office with me to see Mr. Merrick. He's been awfully nice to me. I'll see him first. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we were working in the same office together? Yeah. It'd be just about as wonderful as taking a trip to the moon. No, I've got a feeling about it. I think he's going to give you a job. I'll meet you in the morning and we'll go down together. All right. Good night. Someday it'll be different, Sarah. Someday we'll be married. We'll be together all the time. Good night. Name Merrick and Company. Yes, just a minute, please. I'll connect you with Mr. Halliburton. Name Merrick and Company. Mr. Merrick can't speak to you right now. He's in conference. Excuse me, has Joe Martin returned from lunch yet? No, I haven't seen him, Mr. Fisher. Oh, that boy takes too long for lunch. Why don't you tell him to boil his head for a cabbage? You won't last here very long if you're as fresh as that. I'm thinking of quitting anyway. A month in this dump is plenty. Sarah, I got a great idea. What? I'm going to quit. This place don't suit me. There's, there's nothing in it for me. I don't get along in this genteel racket. Well, what are you going to do next? Have you any plans? Or are you going to be as confused as you are now? I ain't confused. The people here don't like me and I don't like them either. It's all right for them classy kids from college like Merritt's fraternity brothers. They're dragging down a lot of money for what? Sitting around offices swilling liquor and telling dirty stories. That's business. Ah, it's a racket. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, why don't you tell Mr. Merritt to his face instead of talking behind his back? I don't get a chance to see his face or his back. But if I do, I'll tell him things that'll make his hair curl. There he is now. Why don't you tell him for me? You say a lot of wild things, but you don't mean half of it. I think I'm closing the deal with Hatfield this afternoon. You mean it? Yes, he's due here at 3 o'clock. You were after 2 million. 2 million, that's right. That gives him a half interest. Huh? You'll have a board. <laughs> I know, but it puts us right on top of the heap. Yeah, expansion, no limit to it. I'll go over the legal details with you later. Will you get me the memorandum of agreement with Hadfield? Here it is. I thought you'd need it. Oh, always one step ahead of me. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've been on a regular merry-go-round here. I need a little relaxation. What are you doing tonight? Nothing. 
Don't you think it'd be rather pleasant to take a little drive and forget about business? No. I've been expecting this. Are you a mind reader? You're easy. I can tell the way a man looks at me. Besides, you raised my salary, and then again, you never even touched me or held my hand, which alone is so unusual, it makes a girl suspicious. <laughs> Still one step ahead of me. Well, you've got to give me credit. I don't do this sort of thing often. Oh, yes, you do. I'm your secretary. I ought to know. Yeah, well, my interest in women is just nervousness. Well, then don't get uh, nervous with me. <laughs> All right. But I can't help being sorry you're a good woman as well as a good secretary. <laughs> Every time I come in here, Mr. Merritt's tied up. Well, I'm tied up, too. I can't do anything until he okays my coffee. I never have a chance to get near him. You sent for the stuff. Can I go in? I'll see. Say, Martin, those statistics you sent me on cosmetics are all wrong. You'd better be more careful. I'll have to complain about you. Go ahead and complain. I don't like the tone of your voice. Okay, there's plenty about you I don't like. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Merritt, uh, those papers are here from the statistical department. Yes, sir. Your ring for you. Who's in there? Mr. Hadfield. Hadfield? I hear Hadfield's going to take an active interest around here. As a matter of fact, I understand there are going to be some big changes. You can go in now, Joe. You know, I don't know whether I ought to be telling you this or not. But Hatfield may have been talking. And he says to me, he says, Joe, I think we ought to throw these college punks out. Get some real men working in this dump. Mr. Hatfield, the new type of merchandising service is entirely dependent on two sciences. In the first place, industrial analysis of sales appeal, buying power, density of market. In the second place, psychology, knowledge of people's whims, desires, phobias, and if... What do you want? You sent for these? Oh, yes. Where's Fisher? I want him to explain these charts. Well, I think I can show you anything you want. Your people are particularly interested in our plans for expansion in the West. This is what you want, I think. Oh, yes. Why isn't there a short summary of this material? There is, and these here filing cards. I, I worked them out myself. Oh. Yeah, there you are. What's your name, young man? Martin. Joe Martin. Yes, well, that'll do, Martin. I think this will be all you'll need. I'll take these with me and uh, examine them at my leisure. Yeah. Just had a break. One of the richest guys in America just asked me what my name was. You don't seem very blown up about it. Well, Joe, I'm busy. Oh, you are? Yes, I am. Well, what do you think of that? <laughs> I get out of my way. What for? Well, Joe, I have work to do. Well, go ahead. I am. All right, go on. <laughs> please. Oh, I just want to help you. Joe! What? Now, I have papers to assault. Well, go ahead. No, I'll help you. Now, please. Now, you want some of Now, oh, Joe. Now, what? Joe, please. What? They're important. Oh, that's what I said. Oh, Joe. Oh, Joe. Joe. <laughs> I'll drop you into a club. I'll be gone several hours, Miss Griswold. I have an important conference. Yes, Mr. Merritt. I'm on to that guy. Does he ever do anything but gab and drink? He's terribly busy. You heard him say he was going to a conference. Conference? Blonde or brunette? What was it you said you wanted? Money, money, money. Charming. You're so nice and subtle about it. I'm too nice to be subtle and you know it. I don't know how to be coy. Besides, you wouldn't like me if I were. If I'm not satisfactory, you can kick me off the payroll. You're just a poor little thing who doesn't seem to be able to make both ends meet on a thousand a month. I'm sorry, Ray. I do my best. But my bank account always seems to be overdrawn. You're a fool to be so generous. Oh, don't be so morbid. I'll take care of it. I always will, as long as you limit your affections. It's undignified. Why don't you make it nicer, Ray? Why don't you marry me? You've got no soul. Neither of you, you old codfish. 
<laughs> That's why we're so well suited. <laughs> you don't love me. I might learn if I had leisure enough to concentrate, really set my mind to it. Comfort and security. I always figured I'd marry somebody rich and dull and kind. You see, and I'm just the type. Thanks. What's the good of chasing after something that doesn't exist? Aren't there any romantic people in the world? Sometimes I think I'd like something quite different. Something mad and wonderful. A really exciting man who'd sweep me off my feet. Try Spain. Why don't you find some young kid, if that's what you want? I don't like them young. Is that so? Well, you won't make a dream daddy out of me. I advertise all the preparations that go to make you wonderful. Oh, so you admit I am. Well, you do pretty well with yourself. You're apt to drive men crazy. That is a fair little crack to start with. I'm still sane. Now, let's go on as we are. It may not be perfect, but it's awfully cozy. Huh? Mr. Halliburton wants to know when he can discuss that glamour cream copy with Mr. Laird. I told him I'd call him. Hey, Sarah, it's after five. How soon can you beat it? I don't know. I'm waiting for Mr. Merritt. <laughs> Just saw a new dame out at the switchboard. What's the matter, you fired? No. I'm working for Mr. Halliburton now. Huh? It's worse. Oh, he's terrible. He uses awful big words, and he gets mad because I can't spell them. I thought he was going to jump down my throat because I couldn't spell them meretricious. Why don't you use your sex appeal? Next time he balls you, I'd just jump up on his lap and rumple his hair. That's Miss Griswold's system. Look how well she's getting on. Oh, shut up, Joe. Gee, you're fresh. Did you mean that, Joe? Are you really jealous about me and Mr. Merritt? He's been awfully decent to me, and I respect him. Go on, let him have you. I know what's what, you know. That's what it amounts to. He's soft on you, and you're eating it up in a big way. Go on, I don't blame you. Maybe he'll raise you two bucks a week. I, I can't stand you going on like this. You hurt me. Seems you like to hurt me. Oh, I, I, I don't mean to hurt you. We've got to protect each other. It means our future together. There's no future without money. And I've just got to have it. I've been waiting for a break ever since I was born. This Glamour Cream copy has to go out to 17 magazines tonight. What am I to do with it? Use your own judgment. That's enough out of you. You're an assistant clerk here. You'd better learn to be civil to members of the staff. I'm not going to take any gaff from you. No. In that case, I'll have you thrown out of here. Why, you dirty little college shrimp. I could shake the stuff inside of you. Take your hands hand. Go on, Nancy. Go on, I'll poke you in the yeah, face. Go on, with it. This isn't Madison Square Garden. What's the idea? I just wanted to see the sawdust fly. Get out. Okay, I'm on my way. You and your high-head fraternity brothers are all the same to me, Mr. Merritt. You don't want anybody in this office with brains enough to stand on their own feet. You got a lot of saps working here that don't know their business. All they do know is to get down and pray every time you look at them. Well, I don't like the place. I don't like the way it's run. I don't think so much of you. Well, that's about enough from you. You're fired. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Come in my office, sir. Well done, Mr. Merritt. I wouldn't be so cocky. I imagine it's your fault as much as his. <laughs> I like his nerve. Will you okay the glamour cream copy now? No woman's going to plow through all those words. It's too crowded. Won't fit on the page. Well, I'll try it again. I'll sweat blood to get this right. Your blood won't sell glamour cream any more than your stupid copy will. I'll do it myself. Did you ring Mr. Merritt? Yes, have to work tonight, Miss Griswold. New copy for the Glamour Cream campaign. You're not fair. I'm so fair that I'm giving you another chance. Why don't you go out and get drunk? Maybe that'll make you forget that you're a bright young man. All right, sir. I'm afraid that boy's a sap. Yes, sir. That's the way Joe Martin felt. Your friend? <laughs> He's a raving lunatic. Oh, no, he isn't. He's smart. He's ambitious. And he feels everyone's against him. 
He's had a lot of hard knocks and he's bitter about it. He wants to get ahead. I can't figure out what you see in him. <laughs> you don't know him. There's a side to him that other people don't see. He's... He, he's got a lot of imagination and he's sensitive. He pretends to be tough because things hurt him and he doesn't want to be hurt. Well, for your sake, I'll take another look at this very sensitive young man. I'm going downstairs to get a rub down. Tell him he can see me there. Thank you, Mr. Merritt. Well, come on, speak up. What do you got to say for yourself? Well, I, uh... I was dead wrong in losing my temper. And, uh... In a way, I'm sorry. Of course, what I said was true, but I was a fool to say it. To admit one's a fool is the beginning of success. If you're going to give me a success talk, I suppose I got to listen. Well, wait a minute. Don't get hot. Keep your shirt on. And tell me what's wrong. Well, everybody in that dump's afraid of you. And you stand up there trying to kid us along. I'm as good as you are, and it makes me sore. You're a square peg in a round hole, huh? That's a dirty crack its way over my head. Have you read any of our copy? Yeah, all of it. I went through all this stuff in the files for the last two years. What do you think of it? Rotten. Could you do better? If I couldn't, I'd jump out of the window. Suppose you found yourself in a congenial job with a good future ahead of you. I'd take it. It's very nice of you. You know anything about glamour cream? Yeah, I know all about it. Looks like putty and sells for 14 bucks a jar. They put it on at night. Penetrates the pores of the skin, works while they sleep. Sounds like something for bed bugs. It's made from the glandular fluid of real alligators. I've seen them myself. I wouldn't lay that on too thick in a copy. You know, no dame likes to look like an alligator. I'm going to call your bluff right now, Martin. You think you can write copy? Between now and 8 o'clock, you're going to write the copy for one of our most important new clients. If you get away with it, you're hired at 50 a week. This is the stuff, ain't it? Yes, that's it. Give me the dictionary. Told me to rewrite this copy and get it ready for him at 8 o'clock tonight. I can hardly believe it. I'm so glad. You see? You were wrong about him. Don't be a fool. I haven't changed my mind about him. He's only giving me this chance because he's mushy on you. I don't care. There's only one thing that counts, and that's getting the cash. Hot money. There's plenty of it lying around if you know how to get your hands on it. I'm worried about you, Joe. You're so bitter. You're so anxious for money. Oh, go on, write me a letter about it. I sometimes wonder if you love me at all. Cut it out. There's a time for everything. Wall was here. Get out. I thought you were fired. Get out. Ah, you could knock me over with a feather. Why? Joe Martin, in there, sitting at the boss's desk, running his fingers through his hair. I couldn't have been more surprised if I'd seen a kangaroo sitting there. Is Mr. Merritt in? No, but I think he's coming back. Oh, thanks. I'll wait. I'd like to be in her shoes. <laughs> well, I don't see what's so funny about it. My eyes are pretty near as big as hers. It isn't her eyes, baby. I thought I smelled perfume. I'm sorry. 
to interrupt anyone who looks so busy. That's all right. Thank you. Do you happen to know where Mr. Merritt is? He might be in any one of 40,000 places. Really? Why not? He knows a lot of places. May I wait? Can I stop you? Would you mind telling me who you are? Well, that's hard to tell. Sometimes I'm me, and sometimes I'm 12 other guys. You say such odd things. I ain't such a socialite, Miss Carter. Oh, you know who I am. You think there's anybody in the office who doesn't know who you are? Well, I hadn't thought of that. What's your job here? Well, I'm sort of a combination office boy, statistician, and boot black. Well, you want to shine? <laughs> You are very amusing. Same to you. Anyway, I'm glad of a chance to have had a whiff of that stuff. So you like me? I don't know. I ain't had time to dislike you. But that lavender water sure gets my nanny. <laughs> Take a good whiff. What do you call it? Fièvre d'amour. You use it all over you? Well, not exactly. I, uh, I use other things. <laughs> I can just see in a hot bath of this Amour stuff. <laughs> oh, that's indecent. Yeah? I heard worse. Tell me worse. I've been sitting up here trying to think up catchwords for the luxury trade. Trying to sell cream to dolls that rub it on themselves. Suddenly I look up and you're standing there. I mean, glamour. This beauty they get up for 14 bucks a pot. You're a pot of that, see? It's the stuff that makes poets go cuckoo. <laughs> go on, you're cuckoo yourself. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. You're... you're not so much. But you look like you stepped out of a little pot of gold. And when I seen you, I seen the whole game. Oh, you're too dumb to get the idea. Oh, I'm dumb, am I? Yeah. You're just a pink piece of fluff for the luxury trade. You know, I could use you. What for? Oh, just to crack the whip over you. Because you're so wild. Because you want to punch people and call them names and walk over them. I could teach you a few things. And if I wanted to, I could make you jump through hoops. You want to try? <laughs> I'm joking. Give me my handkerchief. No. I want it. I need it. If I had a million dollars, I'd buy you. You wouldn't get me. Wanna bet? My sales went up a hundred thousand on the strength of that. But that's nothing to what we're going to do. Now, next time, I'm planning something new. This layout, I want on a double-page spread in the eight leading class magazines. Mr. Merritt. What is it, Jeffrey? I think you should include a swan. A swan? Oh, a swan. Oh, forget it. Now, look. This thing, even as it is now, isn't right. Not, not as I see it. The clothes on this girl should be much thinner. 
And this man should be standing over here, looking at her, with his eyes shining, you know. Well, that's up to the art department. Now, look, I'll furnish the ideas. All you boys with a college education have to do is to take those ideas and to put them into fancy words. That's enough, Marie. The yellow gown tonight? Oh, I don't care. I don't care what I wear or where I go. You know, Marie, I don't like men. And I'm not the kind that gets any real comfort out of a good book. So what? Well, that's Mr. Merritt now. I don't care what she's doing. I gotta talk to her. You can't go in now, Mr. Martin. I can't see you now. I've got a date. Besides, I told you not to come here anymore. I don't always do as I'm told. I'm dressing. I can see you are. Well, let me talk to you for just a minute anyway. I told you I didn't want to see you anymore, and I meant it. You and I don't get along together. Every time we see each other, it's a free-for-all. I haven't got any time for romantic kids. It's just a joke to me. I don't want to be bothered. That's the kind of a cold potato I am. That's what you say. So you don't mean that. You'll change. When are you going to get that million dollars you're always talking about? Sooner than you think. You wait. One of these days, I'll bring you stuff. Jewels the size of an egg. Stones that'll make you sweat to carry them on a hot day. Sounds pretty, but it's all talk. I'll give you the world, as a present. Oh, maybe not the whole world at once, but... But in time... I know how you feel. Anything you can't get makes you sick and sour. I know how it is looking in shop windows. Now go away. I'll get my arms around you once. I'll never let you go. Now don't. Now don't. Don't do that. Now get out. You'll change. You just give me time. I'll make you change. Well, Joe, I had no idea your devotion to my interests was so far-reaching. I think he's the saddest boy in the world. He's all twisted and funny. He wants to be a great man. And he wants to be sweet. I'll turn my back and count three while you get the rest of the office help out of here. Oh, don't be funny, Ray. I don't want him around, but he won't let me alone. He bothers the life out of me. He's after me all the time. Dear little Agnes, don't be hard-hearted. Oh, lay off, Ray. When I stop being straight with you, you'll know it. I'll let you know it. That's very charming of you. After all, direct information is the most reliable. Murray Motors open ten and three quarters. Last sale. Ninety-seven eighths. A block of ten thousand. What about Pomeroy drug products? Yes. Union Motors. Thirty-eight and a half. I'll tell him. The market's not so good. A lot of jackasses thought we had bottom last fall. I knew better. You know everything, don't you? Not quite. 
Oh, excuse me. How do you spell unique? With a K. U N I K. Thanks a lot. That's the way I had it, but it looked funny. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Where's our M? Mr. Merritt hasn't come down yet. Don't be so formal. Haven't you got time to talk to an old friend? After all, we're still friends, aren't we? I don't know. You've changed so. Yeah, both of us. Getting along. <laughs> Rags to riches, eh? I don't know about the riches. Well, the salary I get ain't so much. It's the market that counts. It's those sweet words I read on that tape. I'm not taking any of their dumb tips. I'm selling short and making money. Say, you remember the first time I got a job in this place? It was the day after my brother's funeral. I haven't been down on the east side since... Well, it's more than a year. It seems a million miles away. Good morning. You want to see me, Joe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just for a minute. Have you, um, you broken the news to Halliburton yet? Uh, no, I'll, uh, I'll talk to him right now. Will you send Halliburton into my office? Yes, sir. Well, I closed with the Gruger paint people today. One year. They promised to spend 200000 on the household varnish campaign. Well, that's great, Joe. I'm glad somebody's got 200000 to spend. <laughs> <laughs> Want me, Mr. Merritt? I hear you're having a big bang-up society wedding next week. You know, I feel pretty bad that you didn't invite me. Don't keep me in suspense. I'm sorry, Jeff. You're through. Well, I've been expecting it, only... Only I'm getting married next week, and I hope... Well, you see, my boy, my hand's being forced. It's been a pretty bad year. And the bankers are not satisfied with our overhead. Well, I don't want to sit around being charged to overhead. Let me know if there's anything that I can do for you. Good luck. Same to you. Mr. Morton of Brian and Goldberg. I want to speak to Ned Bottomley of Bottomley, Gower and Gates. Hello, Morton. What's the latest? I don't care how much I'm short. I'm going to keep on selling. You can't go wrong at these prices. Now, I've got inside information. There's going to be a rise any day. People who think they can sell America short are crazy. Say, listen, I want to be short a thousand shares before the end of the day. Sure, it's going on dropping. I studied the charts. When those little black lines start going down, it takes more than optimism to stop them. from Mr. Fisher's office. You forgot these, Miss McCabe. Oh, thank you. Well, say, Dinah, how do you like working for Fisher? Any complaints? Funny, I, I used to have that job myself, you know. Oh, oh, he's wonderful, Mr. Martin. Mr. Fisher's just lovely to me. Miss McCabe is a very charming girl, Mr. Martin. She belongs definitely in the plus group. Very, very willing. She's been a great help to me, really. Sounds like you got a regular love nest in there. Oh, Mr. Martin. It's nothing like that. Nothing of the kind. But, oh, I wish it were. Dinah, I congratulate you. At last, you're working for a man who's willing to do wrong by you. Oh, Mr. Martin. You, you don't suppose I would have said he was lovely to me if he'd tried anything like that? You never can tell. Oh, a man's better nature should overbalance his lower instincts. He wants to marry me. Oh, well, that's great, then. You see, Mr. Martin, out of 750 people under the age of 28, 77.2% are either married or have definite expectations. 22.8% are mothers. Well, of course, the, the females are mothers. But not a... Oh, dear. I, I, I have work to do. Yeah. Oh, coming, Mr. Hatfield. Yes, I want to talk to Hatfield himself. How about my proposition? You been giving it any thought? 
I've been giving it plenty of thought, but one must have some regard for the ethical side. Oh, thanks. You know, frankly, I don't get this stuff about ethics. A moment, please. Oh, excuse me. Do you think it's loyal to come to me behind Merritt's back and talk about him? I ain't got time for loyalty. Merritt pays me a salary and he gets full value for it. But if you leave him in charge of the firm, we'll be bankrupt within a year. But if I follow your suggestion, we may lose Merritt. If we do, we can stand it. But he won't quit. He's lost every dime he's got in the market. He'll have to hang on. Listen, Mr. Hatfield, will you please leave Merritt to me? Come on, come on. Why don't you tell me the truth? Does Mary give you money whenever you ask for it? It's none of your business. I'm making it my business. You're nothing in my life, Joe. Never will be. Then why do you go out with me? Of course, it's very flattering for me to have a young man who's nutty about me. Besides, you're much nicer than you used to be. Your manners have improved. How about Merritt? Don't ask me questions. And don't act as if you own me. I can paddle my own canoe. Isn't there any place in your canoe for me? <laughs> oh, I should say not. You're the kind that rocks the boat. Does Merritt give you money or don't he? Wouldn't you like to know? It's a simple question. All you gotta do is answer me yes or no. You handle all the checks. You must know whether she still gets one each month or not. Answer me, does she still take his money? Oh, what a fool you are! With all your brains and your feelings, while you're all tied up in knots, you can't see anything straight. You mean she's still friends with Merritt? Let go of me. It's nothing to me. I'm not going to help you. I don't care whether you live or die. I hate you. Oh, hello. I hope I'm not interrupting a tete-a-tete. Come into my office a minute, Aggie. I want to talk to you. No, thanks. I didn't come to see you. I came to see Raymond. What's the matter with him? Miss Carter, Mr. Merritt. He'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Did you ever use this glamour cream they advertise so much? Yes, I've tried a jar once. It's lovely. Mm. Yes, I've used them all. I suppose I'm afraid of getting old. How could anyone ever think of you as being old, Miss Carter? Oh, you mean where there's no thought, there's no wrinkles? <laughs> Don't kid me, Miss Griswold. I know your opinion of me. I never even bothered to have an opinion of you. Well, what's your opinion of Joe Martin? I can't help it if he makes a fuss over me. But I don't take him seriously. <laughs> to me, he's just the comic relief. Oh, how can he feel about you the way he does? You're such a fool. That's all you are. How can he love you? I... Well, I'm glad you said what you thought. I didn't mean to. Uh... You can go in now. The old sun comes up when it's ready, whether you like it or not. I guess you'd tell the sun to stand still if you could. <laughs> hey, you're almost home. Do I have to leave you now? Come up to breakfast, but promise not to be sappy. Thanks. Listen, Aggie, you've got to make up your mind to do one thing or the other. You promise not to be sappy. Do you want breakfast? 
No. Well, then come and watch me have mine. You made a bet with me once. You haven't forgotten it, have you? A million. I'm about to take you up on that. You haven't got it, Joe. I don't believe you. Yeah? You want to see my bank book? <laughs> Say, if what I have were in quarters and dimes, I, I could build a pile as high as the Empire State Building. All right. Pile up your dimes and quarters. I don't want them. You might as well live up to the bargain. The bet's off, Joe. Forget it. You don't mean that. I've waited a long time for you, Aggie. You got a heart, haven't you? Well, why don't you listen to your heart? You've got a tear in your eye right now. I know it. You want a handkerchief? I got one. See? It's yours. What a fool you are. What a fool. Well, I must say you don't keep it very nicely. No. No, but it's, it's, uh, it's perfumed. I kept putting that, uh, their Moore stuff on it. For three years I've been true to you. To my dream of you. Don't, Joe. Don't. I've built a house so big you won't be able to find your way around in it. I'll make it legal. Suppose we get married right away. Why do you want to marry me, Joe? I'm no good. I like you. But I'm wise enough to know that all this poetry about love and romance doesn't mean anything. You just want me because I'm hard to get. There's no sense in your marrying a girl like me. Supposing I want to marry you. Supposing I want to give you things. Take care of you and make you happy. Not for just a month or a year. Don't say no, Aggie. I think it's just too funny. The girls in the department just had hysterics over it when I showed it to them. Oh, excuse me, Miss Griswold. I guess I shouldn't have talked to you about it. You used to be sweet on him yourself, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you should have had your hair blondine. Might have made all the difference in the world. I'm afraid you're right, Dinah. Do you know what Myrtle said? I really don't care what Myrtle said. It doesn't concern us in the least. Well, I don't know why not. Miss Carter's practically been a member of the firm ever since I can remember. Have you got the Pickens contract, Miss Grizzle? Yes, sir, here it is. <laughs> What's the matter with you, hydrophobia? Oh, no, sir. I, I just, something just struck me funny. Well, what's so funny about that? Well, you ought to know, Mr. Merritt. Don't be an imbecile, Miss McCabe. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Merritt. Please don't fire me. I just love it here. I've been here eight years, and Mr. Fisher and I are always here the first thing in the morning, even since we've been married. Yes, well, you're not and, being and we fired. Never go to but you will be if you but keep on talking. Un yes, sir. Will you come in my office, please, Miss Yes, sir. Will you go over to Fifth Avenue and get a wedding present for Mr. and Mrs. Joe Martin? Something under $500. Write an appropriate card and charge it to me. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's amusing, isn't it? 
You know, I think you and I ought to celebrate. Celebrate? I've watched you. You're unhappy. Nothing's worth taking too seriously. I don't understand it. Really, I don't. Everybody seems to think love is just a way of passing the time. Oh, well, that's just New York. Maybe... Maybe you and I should protect each other against getting really hurt sometime. Please don't, Mr. Merritt. All right. Had you any sort of gift in mind? Well, uh... What about a nice little bomb made of TNT and scrap iron? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, anything you like. Something big and impressive. One of those big silver things with a lot of carving on it, you know. One of those things you put in the dining room and nobody knows what it's for. Had a good laugh today. What? I just got an inside tip that Welburn and Hayes are going into receivership. Who are they? Well, a year ago, they were our biggest competitors. <laughs> now they're sunk. <laughs> what a scream. Mr. Martin was very particular about the nursery on the south side. I don't know what he wants it for. <laughs> well... <laughs> the usual thing. But this nursery's big enough for ten children, isn't it, Mr. Crawford? <laughs> it's Mr. Martin's idea. Well, we'll make it into a billiard room. You can have a lot more fun with billiards. Well, how about it, Aggie? I couldn't wait to find out what you thought about it. You needn't stay, Mr. Crawford. We'll talk it over and let you know tomorrow. Thanks. Mrs. Martin wants a few changes. Fine, all right. I'll see you about it at the office. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. You mean to say you bought all this land without even asking me? No, I just took an option on it. We'll drive out Sunday and take a look at it. Am I to be buried in a house that looks like Grant's tomb? 30 miles from nowhere? It's not 30 miles from nowhere. It's right on the water here. I don't like water. Am I supposed to raise an old-fashioned family? <laughs> Can't you see me with a sweet-faced brat on each knee? I like New York. I like noise and parties. I'd die anywhere else. Sure. All the thoughts in your empty head are jazz and noise. You're what you are, and I can't change you. After careful analysis, I'm convinced that the the only way to increase sales and to meet competition is by a drastic cut in prices. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get that straight. What's the matter with you? Well, I kind of got a headache, Mr. Martin. Aren't there any girls in this office that can do their work without complaining? Well, well, well it's after midnight now. My brain just won't stand it, Mr. Martin. After all, I'm only a girl. I'm not a gyroscope. A what? Oh, those people that work by machinery. Oh, you know what I mean. Go on home. I didn't know how tired you were. I'm a slave driver, I guess. I work like a horse myself, and I expect everybody else to do the same thing. Well, if you'll excuse me for saying so, Mr. Martin, I don't know how you do it. Sometimes I think you'll just explode like a firecracker. Maybe I will. Good night, Donna. Oh, how do you do, Miss McCabe? How do you do? Oh, excuse me, sir, uh, but I thought maybe you'd gone. Oh, I, I, uh, I was just going. No, oh, Mr. Martin, if it's not asking too much of you, can I have a jar of that glamour cream? Sure. What for? 
You want to make yourself beautiful? No. <laughs> but you know, I've never found anything so good to polish the doorknobs with. <laughs> sure, I help yourself. Place is full of them in there. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. No. Well, you might be more polite about it. Polite? Is this a time to be polite when I gotta get up at 7 o'clock in the morning? It's all right for you. You never get more than a half awake till 4 in the afternoon, and then, then you start riding on cocktails. <laughs> there was the most amusing man there tonight. <laughs> you want me to tell you about him? No. <laughs> he was a foreigner. He talked broken English. <laughs> you good-for-nothing little cheat. I'm not. I don't know. I wake up in the middle of the night and they are sitting there, tight. With your eyes shining, your hair all crazy. I suppose you've been out picking daisies. <laughs> well, anyway, I woke you up. <laughs> I made you jealous. <laughs> if I catch you running around with anyone else, I'll show you. What do you care? You never go out with me. You don't care what I do. I'll find out. Maybe I'll get a couple of detectives to follow you around. You needn't bother. I haven't done anything. Uh, you just watch your step, that's all. I haven't done anything. But maybe I will. I try to be good at what's the use. I don't care what happens. <laughs> I sent for you, Merritt, because I've been thinking things over. Thinking a lot of things over. Do you know that I could make about three times as much money if I ran this business alone? Well, what do you expect me to do? What do you suppose? You're quitting. Why, you're crazy. <laughs> You'll do as I tell you and like it. You can't fight me. You lost your shirt in the market and you borrowed money from the bank on your personal notes. And I bought the notes. You'll take what I give you and be glad to get it. This is the rottenest thing you've ever pulled. Sure it's rotten. Business isn't a Sunday school picnic, you know. I'm not in this for my health. I'll give you one week to clear up your affairs and get out. Is that clear? Perfectly clear. Will you get all my private papers from the files? Apart from the beginning, from 1922? Well, uh, I'll sort them over and keep what I want. Why? Well, I, I'm fired. How? All the usual way, one week's notice. No, please don't be sorry for me. I, I'll get some money out of it, make another connection, start over again. It's peculiar. At a time like this, you, you instinctively turn to somebody that you, you've got a lot of respect for. I wonder if I could persuade you to marry me. I, I suppose I should be grateful, but I... I think it's funny. Well, I... I think we both need each other. I, I'm sure I need you. 
I want companionship, somebody close to me that I can trust. We may not be desperately in love, but it's, it's sensible. Solid relationship, sure and safe. For me, love is something different. It, it isn't a relationship. It's, it's something you'd, you'd die for. For all you know, I, I may be dying of it now. Send her in. Hello, Sarah. What can I do for you? Joe, I'm resigning. Huh? I don't want to work here anymore. Why? Aren't you happy? Aren't you satisfied? I gave you an office all to yourself. You're handling some of our biggest accounts. Classy salary. hundred a week's a lot of money these days. Oh, you've been generous. I don't want to stay here. I don't like it. You don't like me? You don't want to work for me? No, I'm tired. I want to go away. Your feelings are hurt about merit, my, uh, my kicking him out. That's just one of the things you've done. Uh, I don't want you to quit, Sarah. You're the only friend I got around here. The only one I trust. Come on, I need you here. You go on back to your office. I don't want to hear another word out of you. Understand? Go on back. Oh, uh, Mr. Martin, could we speak to you for just a moment, please? Yeah, come on in. Make it snappy. Oh, what's on your mind? Well, I prefer my wife to tell you, Mr. Martin. Well, come on out with it. I'm quitting work, Mr. Martin. So what's going on around here? Old man Fisher struck oil or something? Oh, you tell him, Harry. She's expectant, Mr. Martin. Oh. What I expect is a baby. Well, that's probably what you'll get. Well, name him after me and I'll start him off with a savings account. Well, I sort of thought that I'd name him after his father. That's natural, isn't it, Mr. Martin? Yeah. It's so natural, I don't need any comment. I'm surprised and pleased that the two of you can create a child between you. That's something to be proud of. Does seem wonderful. Does it? As wonderful as that, huh? The two of you are really happy, are you? Oh, more than that. More than happy. Well, that's great. I envy you. You can have your job back this time, Dinah, but <laughs> don't make a habit of it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mr. Martin. We were scared to tell you, but I knew you'd be a prince about it. Only last Thursday I talked to Harry. Yeah, she means thank you, Mr. Martin. Yes, that's all right, dear. Come. <laughs> this man says he knows you. I'll say he does. Send him in, will you? Yes, sir. Come in, Mr. Halliburton. How are you, Mr. Martin? Glad to see you, Halliburton. Sit down. This is like old times. No, it isn't. It's very different. I hesitated about coming to see you. You must be selling something, then. What is it, an encyclopedia or a novelty cigarette case? Not quite that. I'm handling bonds for Jones and McIntyre. You're married, aren't you? How big a family you got? Two kids. We're out in Forest Hills. And all you can do for your family is to pound the pavements with a briefcase full of rotten securities. Why should I feel sorry for you? You had all the cards stacked in your favor. College education, a lot of rich friends. Don't rub it in. I'll be going. You don't have to worry about feeling sorry for me. I'm a happy man. What do you mean, happy? We've been broke and desperate a couple of times. We know how to laugh at all. My wife's a good sport. The kids are great. You don't have to pity me. 
Thanks for a couple of minutes of your valuable time. Wait a minute. What's your hurry? I'll make a proposition to you. How'd you like to go into the statistical department as Fisher's assistant at 50 a week? When can I begin? Right now. You go into Fisher's office and tell him it's okay. Thanks. I'll never forget this. Some people are happy. Did you say something, Mr. Martin? No. No, I didn't say anything. Our operations in the past have been very satisfactory. There's no reason why this new deal shouldn't prove even more successful. Sure. We work well together. We keep our mouths shut. We don't worry about ethics. We get results. I'll keep you informed of every move tomorrow. My brokers will begin dumping the stock at the opening. At the same time, the credit of the concern will be frozen. The tickers will carry the usual rumors. And we'll have Union Motors right in our pockets for, <laughs> for about one-tenth of what it's worth. I need hardly suggest absolute secrecy. Don't worry. As long as we're making money, I'll stick by you. You might have got to Mrs. Martin. She was looking very charming the other evening at the Club uh, Dorset. Yeah. Yeah, she's crazy about those hot spots. I wouldn't be found dead in one of them myself. I admire you, Martin. You're a dynamo, a fountain of energy, but uh, try and get a little pleasure, a little relaxation. Uh, I don't go for those things. Now, I'm out for something bigger. Power. Money is power. I'll get in touch with you in the morning. Right. Goodbye. Yeah? Mr. Ryan is waiting to see you. Oh. Tell him to come in. Hello, Ryan. I've been waiting for you. You got the report? Here it is. Every move she made last week. You're a busy man, Mr. Martin. Why don't you read this over, think about it, and phone me my instructions? No, wait. Is this straight? You hire me to get the facts. There are the facts. Hatfield. Field. Yeah, up at his apartment. I bribed one of the servants and had a man in there on Tuesday. So that's what she's been up to. Hatfield. I'm making it up, am I? I'll take a squint at this. That doesn't prove anything. Don't argue about facts. I called you down here to tell you a few things. A long time ago I knew something was going on. Now I can prove it. All right. What are you going to do about it? Plenty. You thought you could make an ape out of me like this. Well, you can't do it. It's your own fault. You never trusted me. You never even really bothered to know me. Well, I know you're made out of perfume and whipped cream. You haven't got any heart. You've got a little pile of broken glass where your heart ought to be. You make up things about me. You have every part of me in a card index, haven't you? The wax face, the jewels. But that's not me. You're too selfish to see the real me. I'm looking right through you. Don't do that. You're hurting me. Am I? Let me go. I'd like to kill you just to see you squirm. But you're not worth killing. <laughs> yes? Send him in. What's the trouble? Nothing much. I could almost say hardly anything at all. For a minute, I wanted to kill my wife. But I suppose that's an old-fashioned idea. I don't follow you. Yes, you do. That's the whole story. You do follow me. Oh, don't look so upset. 
You were the one who was telling me to relax. Now I'll give you something to relax about. Don't listen to him. You listen to me. And you too. I said for the both of you to give you an earful. We three have been tangled up together too long. I'm through with the both of you. Let's make an end of it. Let's throw all of our loves and hates and everything else right in the ash can and start over. Today, I'm sending all of our private papers and accounts to the district attorney. About how we got hold of Union Motors and all the rest of it. So, you're breaking faith. Go on, give me a lecture about faith and honor and ethics. How does wife stealing fit in? How about the tricks you and me played on the market? You and me are just a couple of gangsters. We cleaned up on Wall Street with tricks that'll make a gunman blush. There's no ethics in this town. It's kill or be killed. Grab what you can. You got my wife and you can have her. When I get through with you, you won't be rubbed with glamour cream. Not this time. It'll be mud and plenty of it. Both of your names will be spread all over the papers. You and your money and your banks. You'll lose all of them and you'll get my wife in exchange. Now get out. He's mad. You're making a mistake. Get out! Come on, let's, come on. let's go somewhere and get a good stiff drink. We need it. Don't bother me, I don't want to see anyone. Joe. Joe, I've come to tell you that... What's the matter with you? You mean this? Well, what about it? Why don't you shoot me? Save me a lot of trouble. I'm in the dark. In the fog. Thinking a lot of crazy thoughts. Asking myself questions there's no answer to. The only answer is this. Why? Did you decide this suddenly? No. No, it isn't so sudden. For a long time I've wondered. The only thing that's kept me here is money. Tied down with bags of it. What good has it done you? Nothing. Just a lot of dreams that turned into nightmares before I could touch them. I dreamed about estates and yachts. I wanted to dump on Long Island. Blocks of grass that stretched right out to the sea. I wanted children playing on the lawn, splashing about in a great big marble tank. I'll never have those brats. I'll never have anything I really want. Has it ever occurred to you that what's happened has been your own fault? Why have you cheated everybody that's come near you? Why have you lied and twisted and hurt people to satisfy your crazy pride? I suppose you're right. It has been my fault. If I had any sense, things would have been different. I... I came to tell you I'm leaving for good. Sarah, look at me. From the minute I turned my back on you, everything went wrong. You wouldn't give me another chance, would you? You've no right to ask. Well, I've been blind. You've been near me and I haven't seen you. Forgive me. Answer me from your heart. Answer me, has it ever changed? You're so romantic, you can't see anything the way it really is. Why, for years you've hardly spoken a word to me. 
Now you expect me to believe that you're dying of grief over me. It's ridiculous. People aren't like that. You don't know anything about people. I don't blame you, Sarah. I know it's hard for you to understand. I know it's, it's hard to believe me after the way I've acted. But I wanted to see myself a great man. A man that leads armies. A king with a crown. Oh, I forgot everything else. I realize now how much I've hurt people. Crushed them. I want to start over now, Sarah. I want to pick up with you where we left off. Because without you, I, I wouldn't be able to... Very quiet until we get into the hospital. Sarah. I'm here, Joe. I want to live. Don't leave me. Of course you're going to live. I won't leave you. I'll never leave you. 